Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Future Friday, we're gonna talk about carbon dioxide turbines. So let's dive right into it. Well, first, if you are thinking about making car uh, carbon dioxide as a working fluid in a turbine, you have to understand what is our current problem that is we are thinking about it. Well, we use fuel in order to make heat. No matter which uh, thermal plant you are talking about, be it coal, be it nuclear, we always use fuel. And more often than not, they are either running on crude oil, uh, gas or coal, they all produce carbon dioxide the more fuel we use the more carbon dioxide it produces so that's the absolute reality we cannot bypass that as of now however our conversion efficiency basically you take the energy in the coal or whatever have you and you convert it you do not get 100 percent of you do not even get 90 percent of you at best case scenario in averaging wise you are getting 33 percent there are some thermal power plants that are specifically uh, almost engineering grade ludicrously expensive they achieve as high as 43 percent but if you average everything out is more or less is like around 33 percent so the reality is we would not need to put so much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere if we can improve that efficiency now because of the scale involved we are talking not something that is like okay it uh, we are talking about like 100 megawatt we are talking about thousands of gigawatt here not in one plant but as in like in every single power plant every single country every single continent it's lot of energy we are talking about and if you have watched my previous video about steam turbines you have already understood this fact that steam turbines have multiple stages high pressure medium pressure low pressure the sole reason even though high pressure produces most of the energy is that even if you can get even more work out of it that would translate to what like around 100 megawatts 100 megawatt per hour like that's a lot of energy and that's a lot of profit so it's a very profitable thing so improving efficiency is not only for like good for the environment it's good for the people running this plant and they want to be profitable so it's a it's a Kind of scenario where everybody wins if we can figure this out so what is the core problem like where in the physics we are having facing problem well we use steam it's a very good it works we know how it works and uh, it relies on what we call Rankine cycle now Rankine cycle is uh, something that is directly based on phase changing properties basically you take water you heat it up you turn it into steam you change a liquid into gas now steam works through the turbine you get your generator out and then you, you let the steam condense and then you get the liquid so you had phase change you had two times you had the phase change basically liquid to gas gas to liquid you had two phase changes now due to this inherent nature you you are losing energy out of it now if you had a system where you had turbine that is working low pressure turbines almost to some extent does that is like low pressure turbine is there the exhaust is almost like you know uh, starting to form into liquid but still the ideal uh, turbine would be like you send a ludicrously high pressure steam and the exhaust would be just raw liquid but we do not have that like again we do have some condensation but it's not uh, that much and majority of the output is still steam so you still need a condenser unit that inherently is wasting energy because if you had removed all of the energy Energy, it would have turned into liquid on its own it does not so that is the inherent principle that is locking the limit thermodynamic limit we cannot push beyond a certain point because of the Rankine cycle itself we cannot bypass that so we look into supercritical system now the supercritical uh, carbon dioxide that we are talking about will work in a different manner that manner being uh, Bayerton cycle now Bayerton cycle will basically have a compressor and a turbine turbine will do the work and you're gonna have heat exchanger whether you're gonna heat it up and cool it down depending on how you want to do it cooling it down does not mean you have to run uh, it uh, with anything it could be the ambient temperature itself could be cooling down and compressor will be so the whole cycle remains in one phase you do not go from gas to liquid or liquid to gas that is one critical aspect only then you can enjoy the efficiency of uh, Burton cycles now Burton cycle is specifically the fundamental thermodynamics of jet engine also because you take air in you burn it and you have exhaust right? everything is in gaseous stage so uh, the efficiency is kind of high so no phase change is very critical you do not want to change phase and on top of that because to maintain super critical uh, carbon dioxide you have to close the loop there is nothing that is leaking into the atmosphere where you have giant cooling towers we just let the steam out not, none of uh, no such thing is happening you have to design heat exchanger so you can only exhaust the heat out not the working fluid now when somebody specifies super critical fluid you have to understand that everything has a behavior directly proportional to their two core criteria, pressure and temperature so when you study in your school books it's like hey carbon dioxide does not go to liquid phase that's true in sea level environment aka 15 psi if you compress the hell out of it you can make it into a liquid now again if you keep compressing it while heating it up 
you you not only have carbon dioxide liquid you will reach a phase which it calls super critical basically you raise the psi to around 1000 psi you increase the temperature to around uh, 80 degree fahrenheit voila you will reach a point where you will literally have something that behaves like liquid acts like a gas literally that's what we call super critical it's a his behavior is like yolo i don't care whether i am liquid or gas like if you put them in a container you will not be able to tell whether the liquid is where the gas is because it will mix and it will have properties like basically you shake it it will, it will behave exactly like uh, there is a liquid inside so it's kind of amazing this uh, super critical fluid however the sole reason we want to deal with all this extra hassle is simply because it allows for higher efficiency and uh, significant enough it's not like 0.1% efficiency it's you are talking about something very high like around 5% more efficient that's a lot of money we are talking about so why exactly carbon dioxide you have to understand that like what we are talking about super critical simply means liquid like density and gaseous like viscosity what does that translate to if you are familiar with uh, density or turbines you know that denser the something is the more power you can extract out of it in a smaller area this the big giant dust turbine that's a steam turbine this tiny one that dudes are holding in their hand that's a 10 megawatt carbon dioxide turbine that's the whole point because it's almost the density is almost uh, multiple times higher than even super critical steam it's almost half of liquid flat out it's like half of uh, water so it's very dense so that means your turbine size is very small that is why everybody tom dick and harry is looking into this there are other gases that has been thought of or even experimented with be it mercury be it uh, helium uh, the reality is if you want to make it small and compact it's like hey i just want to a small thing to do a large thing carbon dioxide is your uh, guy and there is another benefit of that now if you keep the carbon dioxide like if you want to figure out what is the minimum pressure and minimum temperature i need for super criticality it's around 31 degrees celsius at uh, 1071 psi you can uh, start to achieve super criticality that's uh, not a you know, negligible 1000 psi is something serious but again steam uh, power plants work at much higher psi so what will happen if you want to have steam at super critical that's what the germany's uh, power plants do and uh, any new coal power plant that are being made right now they are focusing on that high critical steam because that improves efficiency consequence of that a bare minimum temperature you need is no longer 31 degrees celsius is 373 degrees celsius so this copy is hot and it needs bare minimum 3200 degree uh, 2200 psi so it's huge not only your pressure is much higher your temperature is also higher and in the power plant that i specified they were talking about around 1000 plus degrees celsius steam so it's hot basically what does that mean that means every place you have insulation you have to turbocharge that so it can handle that kind of heat flux and every metal has to be designed so it can withstand that kind of temperature and pressure so it's not a very easy thing you cannot just retrofit most of the old equipment it will flat out destroy so that's why carbon dioxide is chosen because it is very gentle like uh, like uh, in quotes compared to steam and uh, it allows for ludicrously high density that is why every tom decaner is focusing on this now uh, and it also works on single stage in the steam scenario generally most people have three stages here you have one stage done that's it go home you just only have to deal with one small stage so that is very very attractive like can you even imagine if somebody told you like this small thing is capable of producing 10 megawatts like it can have rotational torque of 10 megawatts like you know what the hell like no but it has it so that's the reality that's why people are looking into carbon dioxide Now, what are the benefits? Let's say you did that. Let's say you bite the bullet. You expanded the cost. What are the direct benefits that you're gonna get? Like, yeah, I'm counting on this, and I'm gonna get this. First, the most amazing benefit: low to no water expenditure because the system is closed. You are just dumping the heat energy into atmosphere, and because of the super critical nature, it's kind of easy. And you will not have giant, uh, you know, water swimming pool draining kind of scenario where you are just draining the ground water or the sea water or uh, some scenarios. A river lakes and all that because these power plant drink water like there is no tomorrow like inherently you have to even think about that like oh you may be thinking okay how i'm going to transport coal how going to transport electricity you also have to figure out how the heck i'm going to feed the basically boiler and they, they, these clouds you may think okay steam is expanding but again it's if 100 liters were there you will not able to see it like it's thousands and thousands of liter like in this kind of german scenario is like huge huge amount of uh, steam being wasted so water wastage is a serious thing not every place has the luxury of like you know a river or a, a very good uh, deep underground water system and most of the time it will run out sooner or later it gonna run out not today but 10 years from now so that alone is like people are like dude this is serious we have to look into it because we gonna run out of water and then what we gonna do so that alone on top of that it is small now small you may think like what's the benefit of it it's like one time uh, deal once we built it we don't have to think about it but you have to understand the biggest expenditure biggest roadblock any project faces is the capital cost 
it does not matter what the running cost is if you can't build it what's the point like what's the point like yeah this amazing reactor is amazingly amazing but uh, cost 10 trillion dollar to make people like no problem no problem I, I'm, I'm cool so to make sure where people can actually build it it has to be feasible so currently we have like a uh, multiple multi-wheel trucks where we utilize to transport a uh, giant steam turbines that will literally block up the road that you have to pay for that you have to buy a special transport that you have to buy special permits and you have to have like a specific time lot uh, allotted because again it has to be like the plane has to land or the container ship is, is really heavy all of those things have to line up those add millions of dollars into your project now imagine that versus uh, that old system versus yeah uh, how your turbine is gonna like this uh, 1000 megawatt turbine is yeah it's coming into a normal container box nothing fancy it's just normal container that same you have 18 wheeler or it could be if you have a railway line which most likely you will do for coal system you'll just have yeah one of the train will bring that that's it simple done that flat outer like takes your capital cost whoosh, drops it amazing aspect that alone these two parts alone that i don't need water and i'm not gonna be like you know worrying about like how the heck i'm gonna have like does this have transport or uh, how the heck the roads are linked up how the heck i'm gonna like you know make sure the lp for the insurance the damage and all that no it's just normal thing quick delivery 24 hour amazon delivery so those things are very important then we come to the most amazing part for the environment list it's Five to ten percent more efficient now bare minimum this technology right now is very new because when we started with steam system we had like uh, in edison era we had two percent efficiency right now we are chilling around 30 plus efficiency and in some german uh, ludicrously expensive coal power plants we are achieving 43 percent this puppy starts at 50 like it can easily reach 50 point and many people are very confident with good mathematical reason that it can be pushed even higher like we are talking as high as 60 percent that will be like every coal power plant just became double like with or flat out half their carbon dioxide okay flat out half like uh, because again you do not just want to randomly put electricity into the grid you will destroy it so again that's amazing for the environment you will not waste water amazing you do not waste well uh, insane amount of fossil fuel just to move that damn thing from point a to point b amazing and then it's efficiency boosting that simply means you will no longer producing the same amount of carbon footprint for the same amount of power that's also amazing so what we can expect in the future now this is where the hard part comes in is like uh, you may think carbon dioxide hey it's not gonna corrode but for some reason this puppy is ludicrously destructive to metal like it annihilates metal it's not gonna harm your metal it's gonna annihilate it so even though you see like this this has coated like multiple layers of ceramic coating to give it a fighting chance so it can handle super critical carbon dioxide so the reality is we have to develop new material now we have the materials it's not like i'm talking about something that never been done like it's been done from 2016 2018 and 2019 like it's been built tested and we realized that we have to think differently in terms of uh, metallurgy to make it long lasting because steam turbines while inefficient we know that they last long like some steam turbines have been in service for 50 plus years so this puppy has to compete against that so metallurgy again we have improved metallurgy so we, uh, that's why people are even thinking about it we reached the point now that's why nobody was even though you can find papers as early as like you know 1900s nobody was taking it seriously simply because we did not have metal back then now we have the metallurgy and then seam technology is also very critical because if you are familiar with steam turbines they have glands basically teeth meshed on top of it which are not touching but in that small gap it's creating such a vortex that uh, even high pressure steam does not leak and th that place just to make sure that atmospheric air does not end up entering there they put a positive pressure there using steam so uh, that allows them to have a quote unquote barrier here doing that is very tricky not impossible uh, they are using flex bearings and all i have provided the links down below you can check really how they are trying to deal with this but it is uh, something tangible you have to figure these things out benefit is not huge so it's not like you have 18 20 uh, you know 18 to 20 uh, seals that you have to deal with you only have two because again one stage so that's one good thing but again those are the right now uh, serious imaging it's not something okay hello give me this uh, termite right now we are not there simply because of the dust thing then water and size saving alone is worth it for almost every Tom Dick and Harry that's why every company uh, that is dealing with power they are dealing with this then India uh, also has a like, institute in specifically in Bangalore and they are working with America and they are developing this technology it's uh, specifically designed for sol concentrated solar thermal because super, uh, super critical carbon dioxide has one unique benefit it works surprisingly well at surprisingly low temperature like to achieve YOLO amounts of uh, efficiency like around 40 plus efficiency your steam has to be 1000 plus here 
it could be as low as 400 degrees Celsius. That is the amazing part. Now, there is another benefit of that. There are many industrial processes that have waste heat at that temperature. That's too low for steam to uh, recover energy reliably and efficiently. But this puppy can uh, recover energy at that temperature quite well. That's the amazing part. Think of this way, like metal furnaces and all that. As there are many scenarios, they have radiators and dump energy dumping scenario where they have to dump 400 degrees Celsius. Why they are dumping that energy? Simply because they can't do anything. Else. This puppy can extract energy out of it efficiently. Tada! Like imagine just your uh, metal furnaces and a specific industrial application directly reducing the power consumption. Why? They're recovering energy. So a lot of people, countries, they are pouring their money into this and 10% efficiency is the uh, end game. Right now, that's the what we call achievable goal. It's like if we start today, in few years, we're going to reach that. That's a lot of carbon dioxide saved, a lot, like in gigatons. Like the, in 2018, when they did the mathematics of that, the reality was if all of the turbines in USA was made into that, it would be equivalent of a carbon footprint of entirety of India's power plant. That, well, that's how big of an impact we are talking about. So it's not a little thing or 10% if you 10% in every single turbine. So that's a huge, huge amount of carbon, uh, basically carbon dioxide would be saved. So I'm really looking forward to this. Again, it will still take time. It's not something like, okay, hello, uh, you know, quick delivery, Amazon 24 hour delivery, but it will happen sooner or later. And it has to happen simply because I do not want my country to run out of water. So this was my presentation on super conducting uh, CO2 turbines. I hope you liked it, uh, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show my extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.